Welcome and thank you for joining us for this Royal College of Psychiatrists webinar on the topic of co-production in quality improvement. I'm Amar Shah. I'm the National Improvement Lead for Mental Health and the College Lead for Quality Improvement. And it's my real privilege to host today's webinar. We have almost 500 people signed up to join today, which is a wonderful recognition of just how much we view the importance of this topic. Um, quality improvement, uh, a relatively new concept and practice within mental health. I remember when we first started applying quality improvement in mental health services, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, it felt very new and unusual uh, to be applying techniques that had first been honed in manufacturing and then thinking about how we would apply them in a world that's really focused much more on relationships um, and therapeutic rapport. But we've learned about the, the value of taking a systematic and structured approach to focus really on what matters most to our service users and staff at the point of care and to use a method that allows us to involve people deeply in the process of change, coming up with new ideas, testing them out, seeing what works using good data over time. And that discovery process um, has been found to really result in much better uh, quality of care in a range of different settings around the world in mental health. Now, I know when um, we looked at our data over five years of quality improvement work in East London Foundation Trust, um, and we looked at the uh, relationship between the involvement of people with lived experience in our quality improvement work. And this is after five years of uh, trying out and learning about quality improvement, over 500 projects at that stage. We found a really marked a relationship between the projects where service users were really deeply involved, full partners from start to finish, uh, involved right from the beginning of choosing what's important to tackle, come really understand the problem, discovering ideas, testing them out all the way through true co-production. We found that those projects were three to four times more likely to achieve results and uh, succeed in meeting their goal compared to projects that only had occasional involvement of service users and carers or no involvement at all. So that's a really stark finding for us to have that relationship between involvement of people with lived experience as true partners all the way through quality improvement work and achieving um, the goals of the work itself and improving outcomes for the people we serve. So today I'm really privileged to be able to bring to this webinar two people who have lots of experience of uh, co-production and quality improvement to help us learn about what it really takes to, to support and nurture co-production. As we go through the webinar today, please use the question and answer panel at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. Uh, we're going to make sure that there's plenty of time for Q&A, uh, so I can put your questions to Setwinder and Amy uh, towards the end of the webinar. And um, you can also message the panelists and organizers privately using the chat box if you wish. Feel free to tweet throughout the event using the hashtag RCPsychLive. Uh, you can also tag in the Royal College and the College Centre for Quality Improvement if you wish. This webinar is being recorded and we're going to make sure the recording is available for you to watch on the college website from next week. And we'll be sending out certificates of attendance to you all within a week of, of this event. So without further ado, thank you very much for joining again. I hope you learn something and take something away from the webinar today. Um, and we're going to first of all introduce Satwinder Kaur to present to us. And Satwinder, who I've known for many years, um, is the patient representative worker on the Quality Improvement Committee of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, who's currently practicing as a QI coach with lived experience at East London NHS Foundation Trust. So not only does she have um, a whole wealth of skills um, and experience from her life and uh, work in general, but she brings a real understanding and experience of, of quality improvement work too and supporting teams with quality improvement. As an expert by experience, she's co-designed and practiced co-production um, to improve mental health services at East London Foundation Trust since 2016. So it's my privilege to welcome you, Setwinda, to share your learning with us now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amar, and welcome everybody. Um, I hope today we can share co-production and quality improvement. And I'm gonna to start today by asking what brings me here today as Satwinda Kaur. And next slide, please. It's mental illness. 
And for me, when I think of mental illness, I think of the word and I think of the impact it's actually had on me. And for me, I prefer to communicate, you know, using poetry. And so I wrote this poem about my experience of mental illness. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I do not see me at all. Enter darkness. There is fear and dread. Notice there are heavy dark clouds always on my head. Trauma, tragedy, chased, tired. I ran out of time. Anger, guilt, shame. I did not commit a crime. Lay in my body perfectly still, ready to be confined. Ideas, intelligence, imagination have all died. Listening to evil echoes, whispering, demoralizing lies. Lyrics lost, hearts beams broken, twisted tunes do not stop. Noise disrupts, destroys, and eventually devours my will. End, exhausted, I drown to the bottom of the sea. Searching for me, their sunken treasure, they did find. Survival is knowing that I have loved ones to call mine. Thank you. That's, that is what brings me here, to be perfectly honest. I never thought, as most people do, I'm never going to be experiencing mental illness. But when I did, and it was about 20 years ago, actually, you just think, you know, it's, um, it stays with you. Um, next slide, please. So today, hopefully, we will be on a learning journey together, co-production and quality improvement. Um, next slide, please. So the IHI, and I think it's just the model for improvement, I should have written there. Um, yeah, and if you look at this model, it's quality improvement involves a systematic and coordinated approach to solving problem using specific methods and tools with the aim of bringing about a measurable improvement. And if you look at the model for improvement, which is from the Institute of Healthcare and Innovation, it says, what are we trying to accomplish? How will we know that change is an improvement? What change can we make that will result in an improvement? And then we use the method of plan, do, study, act, PDSA. And, you know, when I first looked at this, I thought, can you really do much with that? Well, I think I'm going to tell you, yes, you can. Next slide, please. Now, this is the NHS co-production model. And rather than looking at sort of other models, and there are many models, co-production, um, and I and ladders and all sorts. And I, and I actually always like this model because it's five values and seven steps to make things happen in reality. Now, I'm not gonna read through it all because I'm sure you can have, find this, you know, or have access to these slides afterwards. Um, but for me, values and behavior and, and my thoughts, and again, I do like to use the word um, co-production, so for me, it's about communication is a shared language to understand. Open and honest, truth is easy to remember. People, humanity, that is what life is about. Respect means feeling valued. We all have our different skills. Ownership is knowledge. When to take part. Dignity is yours and mine. Just remember to be kind. Unity is coming together to grow all our minds. Compassion is smiling and offering your time. Trust is feeling safe and others with others in an unknown space. Integrity is knowing that how you treat others is fair. Offer to help. Not everyone knows when it is okay to ask. Name spoken correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. 
And all these things, they actually came to mind from my own experience of being part of co-production. I think these are so important. And I can actually feel that all of these have sort of, have a sort of been put in place to make it happen really for me. Next slide, please. Yeah, so now Mars just told you all about this and we reviewed 500 projects on our database and it, they serviced projects with service user involvement four times more likely to succeed. And I can actually say I'm part of that evidence. Next slide, please. Yeah. When I, when I started, or when ELF came to Bedford actually, quality improvement was one of the new things for me. Um, and I feel really empowered through it because firstly, you know, I, I actually got to train with staff and being able to actually go back to places where I didn't actually think I'd want to talk about or processes that happened that maybe I didn't like so much or was not happy about. I did. I actually went back through quality improvement projects and made improvements. And for me, that is real. Um, and I've written down here, empowered. I have been here before. So I think when you've been somewhere before, you actually have some idea of how things work. And I started my first project with Keats Ward reducing bed occupancy. And when you think of lots of things, what came to my mind was um, I am fortunate. I, I had a family that support, supported me emotionally, financially, and I had a safe place to call home. Now, when you think of people who sometimes cannot leave the ward, there's so many other external factors, which I think need to be learned about and supported. And I think that's what came from it. And I think at East London Foundation Trust on inpatient wards, they actually do have like a list to make sure that people have this support in place before patients can be discharged. And reduce, reducing waiting times from referral to first psychology appointment. I was referred twice by my consultant psychiatrist. And I think this is where quality improvement tools, mapping the process, actually visualizing where basically my referral goes. And um, it was amazing actually, because there was a backlog in referrals from actually getting to a get into the place where they're actually sort of given to these psychologists. And um, it was actually a very small thing because rather than taking months and months, realized that actually staff could walk across and hand it over the referral. And that was one way of kind of unblocking the system. And then reception standards at Florence Ball House. I dreaded going for appointments. Reception staff and environments made me feel cold and isolated. And this, I was part of this project um, with the leaders training and the staff who actually did this project. It is absolutely fantastic. And because I was part of the team, everybody kind of really, really did listen. And it is a better place and we put some pictures up and things like that as well and staff also have like a feedback board and things like that which is which is amazing actually to see because you know that people do care next slide please 
Now this, this was, yeah, this was probably the most incredible journey in QI that I've had. And this was the first service user carer-led project. Um, and as you can see, we won the Quality Improvement Award for National Positive Practice in Mental Health in 2018. And for me, it was very personal. And you can see in the picture, there's a table and, the, and yes, there are cakes there, by the way, and fruit and things. So I actually got to um, take my tea party poetry, which is very meaningful to me, onto an inpatient acute mental health ward and share that with others. And it had a great impact um, for the ward and for me. And that was, that will always stay with me because that was the first place I ever went on my mental illness journey. Next slide, please. Yeah, and this is, this is kind of from the other side. This is when, you know, I, I am a coach and my first project was reducing overspending on Oakley Court. And when I first thought of it, I thought, hmm, what's that going to, you know, that, that's not really my sort of area that I wanted to. But then I thought, thought to myself, no, I'm a QI coach and, you know, I've got the skills and the tools and methodology to actually coach the team. And that is what I did. And it was amazing amazing actually how we had a patient involved um, to do one of the change ideas which was a poster um, and it says you can see please check stop room and those eyes the glasses without the glasses they're even more scary and um, I just think that you know making patients and carers part of the team kind of creates a culture of accountability where this um, patient who actually was very, very unwell and really didn't smile a lot or anything and didn't speak to staff. But when this poster went up and it was on the medicine cabinet and she, and she was actually being given her medicines, she smiled and said, those are my eyes watching you. And, you know, that makes a person feel involved. And just being, you know, valued actually helps your recovery as well. I, and I'm sure, and we did also have like a 50% reduction. And I think NHS money, I think something like waste is everyone's business. Next slide, please. Yeah, the Bedfordshire Adult Autism Team. Now this was really important and for me, very meaningful the work they do. And I think for this slide, I'm just gonna read out what QI can actually bring with co-production to the whole service. So staff wellbeing, compassionate manager, weekly coffee catch-ups and supervisions. That's how they started the project for reducing waiting times after the pandemic and joy at work. I am honored to listen to people's life stories. I complete assessments and short-term interventions focused on how someone manages to do activities important to their responsibilities, well-being goals and identity. And that was a lovely therapist um, and a great member of the team. And patients and carers, this QI project highlights that there are insurmountable, and this, this carer was actually almost like an oversight person for the whole project all the way through. Um, so this QI project highlights that there are insurmountable limitations in capacity, and that with further resources, the autism service could function in an even more efficient way. Working as a team with those 
working at, at the autism service and with Satwinder as a coach has enabled me to discover more about how QI functions to improve services. So I think working together, you do learn so much. And then I think equity is always so important. And with the learning disability service, autism, adult autism, um, I think the team were just amazing. And this is a quote from, I'm the opera operational manager. I'm the operational lead for the autism service. And I have been the lead for the QI project coordinating and placing particular responsibilities with individuals, individual colleagues. In order to engage services, service users effectively, I meet with Pat and Matt on MS team separately to main group, main group meetings as Pat does not cope well with being on screen. And it's all these little things, you know, when you're working together, you can do it so well and it can have such an impact. Next slide, please. Well, this one is, I have to say, as a project I'm doing at the moment, it's very complex. And this project demonstrates that QI methodology allows for co-production. PDSA actually gives the opportunity to test change ideas and reducing violence and aggression through service user involvement in Coral Ward and we've used multiple methods to involve patients and carers. Um, people participation at ELF, ex inpatients, inpatient community meetings, QI team meetings, and also we have community QI forums. And I shouldn't really laugh, but you know, one of the change ideas was to actually make sure that there's only two staff in reception area so that there are more on the ward. And so they removed the chairs. So there were only two in there. And of course, I have to think in a different way just to make myself smile, I think of musical chairs. Um, but yeah, it actually works because it's often tempting for staff to go in there and start doing paperwork. But when there's nowhere to sit, they can't do that. So there's two people and, and it works a lot better on the ward. And that was something which the patients and carers wanted for their own safety. Next slide, please. Now, yeah, this is kind of a tip. Start where you are. And by this, I mean, even right now, you can start thinking. Um, use what you have. Um, you know, when you have, use what you have, usually time is the biggest barrier and I'm thinking well any time that you can have as a team sit together and actually have a coffee and talk about things that you might want to improve and do what you can you know this is why quality improvement is so impactful you can actually take small steps and if it doesn't work you can always abandon it and start again or you learn from learn from that every single time and I think you know start with the smallest thing you could start with one patient make a difference and then carry on next slide please right as a QI coach I think I owe you some QI methodology and tools and yeah the run the run chart always makes me laugh because actually when I was doing my training and I looked at charts um, that was when I did want to run but actually when you think about it charts data over time that's also us humans we are data over time next slide please And yeah, as somebody, a patient, lived experience, somebody who loves tea party poetry, have fun. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm going to pass you back over to Emma now. Thank you very much, Satwinda. Uh, what a wealth of experience you've just brought to us. Um, and um, such openness and honesty and courage in sharing 
uh, your experience um, of being part of quality improvement work and the various things that you've supported. It shows to us just what you know wealth of interest and skill and knowledge people with lived experience can bring to this work not just in their role as as people who have experience of using services but as you've shown you know people who actually can help us improve can bring real skill with improvement and, and support the health system to keep getting better so uh truly a wonderful um, presentation set window thank you i'm sure there'll be lots of questions so as you've been listening in set window please do and go into the Q&A box and, and type in any questions you may have for St. Linda. We're going to turn now to Amy and to hear Amy's um, experience and wisdom in this field. Amy is a patient representative um, alongside St. Linda on the Quality Improvement Committee at the college. Um, she works for the NHS in a variety of roles as their perinatal lived experience representative at Birmingham and Solihull Mental Health Foundation Trust. She's also the peer leader member of um, NHS England and Improvement's National Perinatal Co-Production Group and is the National Psychological Practice and Physical Healthcare Expert Advisory Group member. So at local level, she provides peer support via Warwickshire-based perinatal mental health charity By Your Side, which informs her contribution to policy making. She's in fact a connector between national, regional, regional and local levels and across different sectors of healthcare improvement. And as an expert by experience, she's also been featured in Birmingham and Solihull's QI written and film publicity materials. And this has recently led to collaborating with the Institute for Healthcare Improvement in the US to champion the work of experts by experience in the co-production of quality improvement. So I'm really delighted to welcome you, Amy, and to invite you now to share your learning and experience. Thank you so much, Amar, for your kind introduction, and um, thank you, Sat Winder, so much. It's always been a, a privilege to uh, work alongside Sat Winder and gain from her um, considerable uh, insights. And uh, she's really uh, spoken to us a lot about the. Um, the huge benefits of, of quality improvement. So um, I can just add to that, really. Uh, my my uh, uh, presentation is really a story. Um, and I'm calling it going from service user to service transformer. Um, I'm setting the VAR high there. Um, so, and this is the reality of effective co-production, I think as Sat Winder and, and Amor have shown with our statistics. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story. It's about me. Here we go. Once upon a time. Um, this is me uh, a few moments after I gave birth to my second son in 2016. And as you can see, I'm absolutely elated. I had a fantastic birth and uh, I was absolutely in joy of, of, of giving birth and uh, looking forward to this new journey as a mum. Um, however, a few weeks after this, I descended into a, a really quite... Um, difficult depression, which then escalated into something um, very severe. Uh, and before I knew it, I was uh, under the care of a crisis team and perinatal mental health services um, and at a loss really as to what to do. Um, it was all uh, bewildering. Um, my family um, and my extended family were, were really quite um, concerned, more than concerned, <laughs> troubled uh, about what we should do and had a uh, countless number of people attending to me and trying to do what was was best. Um, during that time, I felt very alone. I had no idea what to do. Um, my I'd never met anybody else in this situation. There wasn't anybody who could understand what I was going through. Um, I felt that I didn't have any information about what was available to help me and everyone was trying hard, but um, it seemed like nobody really knew what the answers were. I was put on a very long waiting list to see psychology uh, and this was going to be the, the, the answer. Um, but that waiting list went on and on and on and I was at a standstill, uh, but actually not at a standstill, deteriorating. Um, and the next slide will show you just a, what a poorly woman I was. Next slide. This is me waiting. Um, so not, not a, a nice place to be in whatsoever. However, I did eventually see the psychologist who got me straight into a mother and baby unit. Um, and I was there for uh, many months, um, 
on the road to, to getting better. It was a hard route, but the next slide shows the uh, after picture, if you like. Uh, next slide. So yes, you could say, oh, there's the end of the story, happily ever after, Amy got better and she went home and everything was great. Well, in some ways, uh, I, yeah, I did recover and I got home, got used to being a, a mum for my, my family and uh, getting back to some semblance of, of normal life, whatever that means. Um, however, I wasn't content to just stay like that. I remember I left the ward um, and, and had said to the staff, when I'm really better, I will come back to this ward and I'll, I'll do some music for you. I'm a professional musician by background. And I felt that that was something I could do with these women. Um, and also it was somebody else. It was a peer support worker, someone who'd also been in the ward who gave me my hope that I would get better too. So next slide. This is me uh, returning to the ward a couple of years later um, as proudly wearing my NHS lanyard and badge with the pass that I could get in uh, without having to wait for staff to open the door um, and uh, go in and do some music with these ladies. And it wasn't really the music, although that was useful uh, for the, the mums and the babies, uh, that was the thing, but it was me being there as an ex-patient, someone who could understand. So I've written here that um, as an, an expert by experience, someone who's been there, done that, um, we want to use that experience to, to help us understand where we've come from, where we've, we've gone, gone ourselves, um, and to help our, others directly. But as, as I've said in other uh, talks, helping one person directly is very meaningful, but we want to change the whole system if we're going to make improvements. And so I was determined that I could influence healthcare for the better. But how do we do that? Next slide. Thank you. So um, I think we're all learning about this, but uh, we, we've, we're discovering what co-production isn't and what it is. So um, quite often when we're patients, we're given a feedback form. We can fill that in, but we don't really know where that's going. What's happened to it? Is anyone going to read it? Is anything going to happen? Um, so it does feel a bit um, that we're not very empowered to do anything there. Uh, we can consult service users. That's better. Let's let's ask the patients what they think. Talk about it. Show them a document. What do you think about this? Oh yeah, that that's good. But there's not that much opportunity to shape those plans in a meaningful way. Um, however, as um, Satwind and Amar have both <laughs> told us, involving service users at every stage of a process is the way forward um, and it's great. And this can be done in many different forms, but um, all of us here today are here because we are fans of quality improvement. So next slide, please. Yes, but as soon as I'd been employed um, by Birmingham and Solihull, um, I was keen, I heard about this quality improvement training. I thought that sounds interesting uh, and jumped on board there. Um, and I really got the bug for it. Uh, and, and thankfully, uh, as soon as I've pretty much done the, got the certificate, as it were, um, I was invited to join a QI project um, about accessing services in perinatal mental health. So really um, up my street. Um, and so the main, main issues in this particular project were that there were very long waiting times before the first assessment. So this struck a chord with me, remembering just how long I'd had to wait to see a psychologist. Um, and there was also disparity between the uh, length of time in the different community teams uh, in the area. So the idea was, can we cut down the waiting times and can we make it fair? Um, so the whole subject was about that quantity of the time waiting. Um, but for me, the, the amount of time waiting was, was something that would be very hard to fix. This is the NHS and we know at the moment, particularly these waiting times are getting longer and longer due to the backlog from COVID and also more and more people struggling with mental health due to all the, the massive things that are going on in our world currently. Um, so we're going to have to wait, that, that's um, inevitable. And my question was, well, what about the quality of that time? Remembering back to when I'd been so poorly, if I'd met somebody, a peer support worker at that time, perhaps I wouldn't have felt alone. If I'd been given some really useful resources about um, different medications, or if I'd been told beforehand, this is what you might expect, or if my family, my partner had had more information, 
that would have perhaps made uh, quite a difference to uh, how my uh, illness and um, uh, the the, the, um, the journey and perhaps that poorly lady you saw there wouldn't have, wouldn't have actually been like that. Next slide. Um, so uh, th that project itself um, carried on in that, uh, and the, the staff were very interested in this idea of the quality of the waiting time, but they didn't actually become a project in itself. Um, and as that project was coming towards an end, um, I was then told about this other project, which was going to be starting off. They'd already been doing a little bit of work on it. And this was about improving the access to specific therapeutic interventions in this uh, the perinatal mental health service, um, which was really about provi providing referrals to the most appropriate intervention and sooner. So again, looking at people's real needs and not just saying, we'll stick you on this list for psychology. Um, and then when you get there, you'll get the help. Um, and actually they were finding with these long waiting lists that by the time somebody got to see a psychologist, they might have said, well, actually, that's perhaps not the best therapy for this patient, or they got past that point. Um, and so it wasn't really working efficiently or effectively. Um, also that the multidisciplinary team in the, the service did need more guidance referring to the right interventions um, and the other sort of interventions were things like occupational therapy, nursery nursing and peer support. Um, but some of the staff perhaps weren't quite sure what, what would it be involved in that? What does an occupational therapist do in the context of perinatal mental health? What do nursery nurses um, offer? Uh, and, and equally, um, is peer support really very useful? Um, yes. <laughs> um, but to alleviate that weight, so, so it might be that actually once somebody's referred to nursery nursing, they find that that uh, being able to bond with their baby is what they really needed and they didn't really need lots of CBT or psychological interventions. Um, so my, here's me with a light bulb going on here, light bulb moment, aha. So the staff are now thinking about what we do during that wait time rather than just cutting down the wait time. Next slide, please. So yeah, the, the challenges there for the aims of the project were this long wait for psychology, fact that not all women needed or wanted psychology and um, there were missed opportunities then for the other therapeutic interventions. Um, so the, the project started off um, without peer support workers involved but, but um, they realised that that would be very useful. Um, I was in, invited to join as the expert by experience and it became a proper QI project. Uh, the next um, uh, box. Uh, this was from a presentation that we did recently, was this asking the question, how do we help women access the right support efficiently and how do we support those women while waiting? Um, and it says here, better understood as Amy's bus stop analogy. So my point was that if you're at a bus stop and you don't know where you're going, uh, you don't really know when the next bus might be coming and you might be waiting a certain amount of time or there might be, a, it might be, two might come at once. <laughs> Um, but also, if you're going to be going somewhere, it would be helpful if you had perhaps the timetable for the train you might be getting on next, or actually know what the, the, the name of the place you're going, uh, but just standing at a bus stop is you're going to feel pretty helpless. Um, so I've, I've put the stars in here just as a kind of representation of the things where we felt that expert by experience input had made a difference. Next slide. So this is a, a lovely QI driver diagram. Apologise that it's very small. Um, done my best to, to blow it up as much as possible. Um, but here again, you can see um, starting on the left with the aim was to improve the access to these interventions. Um, another thing that I've said a lot is about providing information. So in the middle, we've got working with service users to increase the awareness of the range of therapeutic options. Um, and then a change idea was to develop information leaflets, um, or it might be an online resource to inform them more about those what those interventions are. So they've got knowledge, they can understand a bit more. It's not so so um, unexpected or frightening. I don't really know what this is. Um, and something we're trying to explore is, will that affect the rates of um, what we call DNAs, do not attends? So if somebody knows what they're going for, they, are they more likely to attend the appointment rather than think, well, I don't really know what that is. Um, I'm not really feeling well enough to get out and, and, and find out about it. So um, again, that, that was um, an, an input from, from um, some ideas that I had. 
Um, next slide, please. I'm not going to take credit for everything, though, <laughs> I promise you. Um, so these are some of the challenges that I felt, um, particularly as I've been quite uh, new as an expert by experience and new to the world of QI, and perhaps had a, a slightly naive um, view of what might be able to be possible and not. Um, I certainly felt going into the project that I was sort of having to persuade them that actually having a patient, an ex-patient on board would be useful um, and not just, you know, ticking the box. Um, also, I wasn't part of the clinical team. I'd never met the people. It was COVID time, uh, no, no real face-to-face -face meetings. I had to keep learning about what these systems are, um, all the acronyms that the NHS are using, and, and just you know generally how all those systems work. Uh, yeah, my naivety about making changes. Oh, why don't we just do this? Oh, well, we've got to go through this, 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 and it might take you know 18 months, um, and that frustration of just wanting to help straight away. Um, the time limitations of the staff, these staff who work so hard, they care so much and they're really wanting to, to do stuff, but it will go for a month and, and, and not manage to, to do the next task, as it were. Um, and also, if, if we had any ideas um, that I might have worked on in the meantime, just kind of take do the spade work, as it were, um, I, sitting at home here, it couldn't actually implement those initiatives, so it was kind of needing to pass the, the, the baton on to staff. Um, so quite a few things to, to try and get my head round as well. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this is uh, one of the outputs from the project, um, which is very exciting. Uh, um, the, the lead of the project has spent a very long time with her colleagues um, looking at how we help the MDT to refer to these interventions. Um, so on the left, you've got uh, looking at, at a, a mum, um, a dad, the parents, um, saying, what are the signs that might indicate difficulty so that when you're talking to them, you can kind of begin to get a picture of where they are. Um, some guiding questions, things that can help. And then the last column is the bit where I kind of jump up and down and say hooray, because um, this was a column that didn't exist um, until I was saying, what about resources, information? And so this, this was put in um, to say, yeah, let's give people information. What can they do um, at home or what the other um, professionals signpost people to so they don't feel completely alone. They feel empowered to do something about their own situation. And it is particularly important that, you know, that the whole family can do that and really help that mum who's in a, a difficult situation. OK, next slide. Thank you. So sorry, this is a bit wordy, but the slides will be available afterwards. Um, and I really wanted to kind of put in some of these uh, sentences to, for us to take away. Um, so as I said, you know, from being a service user, um, I then became a service contributor um, and hopefully a service transformer. And that's that's a really wonderful thing to be able to be part of. It's a huge privilege. Um, and I saw in this project at the first meeting, somebody did say, oh, we hadn't really thought about asking patients, um, which which was uh, felt like a big obstacle. But then as the project went on, they were actually see seeking my opinions on things and uh, trying out suggestions and uh, rethinking the way they did the thing, able to delegate tasks to me when I say, well, I've got a bit of time. Let me do that, that bit of work while, you know, you've got to see patients. Um, and significant changes were made. And eventually um, I was asked to co-present the project uh, with, the co with the QI lead after the perinatal service away day. So wonderful to see that um, real collaboration going on. Um, and uh, all of us um, have gained transferable principles, um, being able to you know, appreciate the, the insight that service user might bring, um, but also other skills that we have. You know, we're not just our mental illness, like I mentioned before, I, I'm a professional musician, but I also discovered I really liked looking at data and I really like kind of doing the spade work and helping people uh, find resources and things. Um, uh, it's really been a rewarding collaboration um, and uh, we're seeing that there are outcomes, um, the, you have made improvements in staff efficiency and their satisfaction. They're feeling like, you know, they're seeing more of the right patients and that service users will also um, 
being be able to recover uh, quicker because they're involved in their care planning and they've, they've been it's been identified what's been relevant to them and they're not just put on another waiting list um and what i'm excited about this is that uh, we have reframed this concept of waiting it's not a static state but it's a progressive part of your care pathway um, because we can equip the staff and patients with resources to address their immediate needs while they're waiting. Um, and this referrals guide um, is proves that we have, you know, we, we're trying to improve that quality of waiting time through signposting to in, information. And as a service user, that really empowers you. Again, I've said before, you're not sitting on your own just waiting for things to happen but you're like, ah, oh, right, this is something I could do that might just get me one step further on my, on my way to recovery. Um, and hopefully that can then be adapted into other services, these, these concepts. Um, so as I've said, a service user can become a service contributor and a service transformer. So final slide. Thank you, Bethany. Here, and they all lived happily ever after. Well. That, that's that, that's the aim anyway is that we get we we're always going to be learning but we're going to be getting there to a place where people are feeling like they're more uh involved together so as a patient this chap on the left is i want to make a difference the healthcare worker i want to make a difference too but it's together that we do make that difference um let's work together to transform services and transform lives that's where we're coming from i thank you for listening I'll send you back to Amar now. Wow, thank you so much, Amy. That was fabulous. Thanks for sharing your story and journey with us. And uh, you know how inspiring to hear the way in which you've moved towards service contributor and then service transformer. I love, I love <laughs> that language. Well done. We've got some um, super questions coming in, and we'll take as many as we possibly can in the next twelve minutes. Um, Amar, let me start with your question, and, and um, I'll, I'll put this to each of you in turn. Uh, question each. So maybe let me come to set window for this first one. Um, a really important question here from Amar. For services that are not used to co-production, but hoping to, where is a good place to start to find people with lived experience who are willing to support quality improvement work? I, for that question, I would say look closest in your own service. And I don't know if you are a consultant, psychiatrist or whatever, but you're looking at whatever patient you're working with. And that's the place to start. Could I could I come in on that one as well? Yeah, um, something we're we're trying to look at a bit more on on our trust is how do we contact people after discharge? I think when someone's just been discharged, they're not perhaps in a place that, where they want to be doing that. Um, but to to have some kind of um, you know patient evaluation forms as you're leaving um, that that say things like would you perhaps um, in, be happy for us to contact you in a year's time to see how you're doing, how, how are you getting on? And also, would you then, would you be somebody who would like to contribute to services? Um, and it, you know, it's a, and people can say no, or they could say yes, uh, but if, if they um, have got the option uh, of being, uh, that you've got permission to contact them, then you can do that. But obviously that, that, that means that somebody has to be um, uh, keeping those databases up to date. Um, can I just share that we've got a fantastic system at East London Foundation Trust called People Participation, which actually works with patients, you know, from community services, mental health, inpatient services. And for us, we have that big, massive, and that is how I became involved as a patient myself. And, you know, it is about looking for people who've been in the system as well. And this is where, when I'm doing my inpatient project, I will ask the people participation leads if they can put out a call for people who've been on that ward as an inpatient before that. And I've got somebody who kind of happily chose to oversee the whole working of it. So it's really good, I think, when you do have a system in place. Mm. And let me let me build on that uh, with a with there's been a few questions coming in about um, the kind of training, support, remuneration 
that we really want to be thinking about to support people with lived experience and experts by experience to be able to contribute to improving services. So what, what have you um, learned, you know, is most helpful when thinking about training, support and remuneration? Amy, do you want to start and then we'll bring to that window in? Um, yeah, that, again, that's something that we're considering a lot at the moment, the, the train, training and also training for staff as well on how to do this. Um, uh, I don't think NHS income would mind me being a big advert for their peer leadership development programme. This um, is a really excellent programme for um, anybody with lived experience um, to to find out how, again, how do NHS systems work, what's personalised care, um, and, and to, to kind of build up your confidence about working in the system and uh, also developing a, a network of peers to support you in that. Um, that's, that's been tremendously helpful. Um, um, I did that and, and I, I can't, um, you know, sort of praise it enough. Um, we can put links to that, but yeah, anything, that, that can help you to understand the way sy systems work. And again, um, many trusts do their own quality improvement training courses, which you can either do as an expert by experience, or you can do it alongside staff. Um, but yeah, definitely get, getting trained up. There's lots of stuff out there. Again, it's trying to find it. Um, and yeah, um, systems in, um, and different trusts have different ways of, of recruiting EBEs and whether they're, they're um, Kind of uh, paid as bank staff or whether they have reward and re recognition schemes there's, there's quite a lot of um variation there um and that's something that can always be um sort of looked at and um and, and worked on to to try and get these things working well so the ebes can can contribute in a in a really meaningful way thanks amy setbinder your thoughts I was, yeah i was just going to quickly say the training i mean when i trained initially in 2016, I trained with staff and I am actually, I feel really privileged because I trained with staff on leaders training and as a coach. And now since becoming a coach, we've actually developed, co-produced a training for service users and carers, just so that, you know, it's not too overwhelming, but they can actually get involved and understand QI as well. So I think that that is really helpful because when I was talking about run with the run chart, I meant it then. And we don't want people to run away. So um, yeah, I think I think small steps and, and you don't need to know everything all at once. You know, as you go through it, it's a learning journey. And you know, as you're working with the project team you will learn and it's and I think reward and recognition well people participation at ELF does have a system set up so everybody knows what they're going to get with that um yeah and yes I can work as a bank staff as a coach and do whenever I want which is really helpful um yeah so there are ways of getting around things but you do have to actually use QI terminology, do it in a systematic way. Yeah, I think that's a lovely message for us, Linda. I know, I know um, this is a complex topic, right? We, we, we need to learn our way into this and actually it's the perfect opportunity to apply quality improvement within an organization, you know, see who's willing to try, um, start small, start where there's some interest and urgency to do something differently. Um, test and learn collect some data how do you measure this uh, do we even have a way to know you know what is the true extent of co-production across our qi work and if we if we don't measure it we'll never know whether we've got better at it so i think that's a really really important message i've got another question um come through about um diversity so you know hearing your story amy uh, someone was mentioning that mother and baby units have a, a wide diversity of clients and i, I think most services would say the same mm. they don't have a single type of of service user or client how do you co-produce improvement um in a way that makes sure you're paying attention to everyone's needs yeah absolutely yeah, yeah i saw that question i also saw one further down about um whether my partner had been involved in service uh, transformation as well um specifically uh, qu quickly answer that on the mother and baby front um 
yeah, I, I as, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm on the uh, National um, Perinatal Mental Health Co-Production Group, which is a group of 15 women who have had perinatal mental health challenges. Um, and we have actually put together a principles guide for delivering the long term plan for mental health services so that um, uh, the d diversity of experience across those women in different places in the country um, has actually put together those principles so it has come really from service users um, with different backgrounds and, and different family needs and so on um, so so uh, and we have looked at how do we meet families needs um, and there is a there's a, a one of the ambitions is specifically about partners um, and how we uh, meet partners needs uh, and and sort of extending that to the fam to families um, and and yeah my, my partner my husband uh, uh, wrote uh, some quotes down from his experience which have gone into this guide so it's it's actually seeing you know how how did a dad um, feel and what what his needs was and things that he felt worked well and things that were missing. Um, so that's from on the uh, perinatal mental health side. I say um, um, diversity as well in um, in co-production. Um, currently, one of the courses that I'm facilitating um, is a group of, of people um, from from one area in the country, um, and within that group we have an, a marvelous range of diversity of people uh, with learning disabilities um, uh, hard of hearing um, we've got somebody who uses voice recognition software we've got somebody well into their 80s um, we have a uh, 20 something year old with with down syndrome who's an incredible advocate and does lots of conferences um, and people who have who are patients and people who have um, who are carers of people with a huge range of needs and what's fantastic is that actually if people are given the right tools to engage it can work um, the, the last um, production workshop that that Sam Satwinder and I were involved with there was a an example of a, a project which was um, involving people with learning difficulties and um, there's there's nothing that people can't do um, if they're not given the right um, ways of doing this um, and equally um, how we oh yes and also in this group we've, we've got a, a, a South Asian lady who whose English is her second language and she has somebody come with her to help her translate and she brings so much to the group as well and helping us understand the challenges from her background um, these things can be done um, and it's just a question of of, of everyone well, it doesn't make it sound easy. It's not just a question of everyone trying, but it's we can do that. We can go out to people and say, what's going to help you to come in here? There's no point just inviting people. You've got to get out to people and try and understand where they're coming from, whether it's a, a different racial background or whether it's disabilities or whatever it is, LGBT. We've got to make the effort to come back. Um, it, it's a huge subject we are all aware of that but but these things can be done and we shouldn't shy away from saying oh it's got to be the people who've got got the education um because that's not true and and the the conversations are far richer when we're involving people from all sorts of backgrounds okay. thanks amy and setbinder your thoughts on this question how do we well, co-produce in a way that pays attention to everyone's diverse needs pursuing equity and I think at ELF, we do have a work stream where we have projects with equity. And also, I am involved with the Advancing Mental Health Quality um, with NCCMH at the World College. And yes, there are things nationally being done using quality improvement to actually create you know, greater equality for everybody. So there is plenty of work, but I think we need to have, we need to kind of connect it all up and work together. Thank you, Satwinder. Thank you, Amy. That's a wonderful note on which to, to close today's webinar. Um, my huge thanks to you both. You really are champions of co-production and improvement and done well, the two go hand in hand, don't they? Um, and, you know, I think you've both given us lots of inspiration and ideas that we can take back and try out. It, it feels big and hard sometimes, but actually you've shown us that 
you know, there are steps we can take. Um, even if we try and we fail and we learn and we try again, you know, it's it's a worthwhile endeavor because it will make a difference for the people involved. It will yeah. certainly make our improvements more meaningful and we'll be we'll, we'll definitely end up with better services and better outcomes for the people we serve. So thank you both for sharing today. And thank you everyone for joining. Uh, it's been a wonderful hour. The recording for this will be available on the website shortly. And for those that have attended in person, you'll be getting your certificates in the next couple of days. So thank you very much, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed the session. Many thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank Take you. care.